Hey guys, we have here our AV130 gimbal with a Sony Nex 5R camera and uh, our RSGS gimbal controller. Before finishing this up, I wanted to show you what components have we used and where did we choose to place them because it's, it's quite important where you, where you place them. Believe it or not, we have spent several hours thinking this through, so it's not something that we did in a, in a few minutes. On this side, you can see the video transmitter. Underneath it, there is the HDMI converter. On the other side, we have a LiPo battery, 3-cell LiPo battery. And near it, we will place the UBC. Now, the receiver and the stratosnapper, this controls the camera remotely. We chose to place this underneath the battery tray. So this will go here. The reason this will go here is because of these four wires here this, that go from the RSGS to the receiver. And we found out that if we place them beneath, it will be the, the most clean way for this, this wire. Because now this wire moves together with the uh, RSGS and the tray, so there is no change in angle between these two parts. So wherever I, I move the, the gimbal, they, they are safe, those cables. Now, uh, let's see the video transmitter and the HDMI. I'm gonna remove this from here. So I can show you the HDMI converter. We spent a lot of time trying to find the HDMI converter, read a lot on, on forums about how can we make a light HDMI converter. So here it is. I think I have to remove the antenna. So here we have the HDMI converter. Now, this used to be in a box like this. So we removed it in order to make it smaller. And on this upper side, there were three RCA connectors. We removed those and we, we soldered the wires from the video transmitter directly on, on this board. On this side, there is the USB power connector for the HDMI. Now, we read that some people managed to power this board via the HDMI cable. We tried this with the Sony Nex 5R and it didn't work. And what happens is that it powers on for a few seconds, then it goes off, then again powers on for a few seconds, and my conclusion was that uh, the current that is supplied from the camera through the HDMI cable is not, uh, it simply is not enough. So, uh, we had to, to make this wire, it's a simple USB to servo connector so that we can power it through the UBC. Now you can choose to also remove this from the board and uh, solder the wires directly on the board in order to have less volume here, it's your, your choice. Another important thing is this HDMI cable. Now, as you can see, there is not much space here for the HDMI connector to go in the camera. You see that it's on the edge on this side and almost no space left here. So this is a, a right angle HDMI, mini HDMI connector. Now the problem with it is that the angle is in the wrong direction. So as you can see, instead of this cable going to the back side of the camera, it goes to the front side of the camera, which is quite annoying. So when you buy such a cable, make sure that it is the, uh, the correct one. It's not easy to find one. And also this one is a bit too long in my opinion. If it would go on the back side, it would be nice to be a bit smaller. This one has 50 centimeters, normally uh, 20 or 25 centimeters should be enough. Uh, let me tell you now about the receiver 
and the channels that you need to use on the receiver. Now this is a 6 channel receiver. Four of the channels are connected to RSGS. Why four? You have three channels controlling the pan if you have the 360 degrees pan kit. The pan, the tilt and the roll. And another fourth is used to uh, power on or off the RSGS. When you take off, you might want it uh, powered off so that it will not uh, move during takeoff. And actually RSGS has three options. One is for the gimbal to be powered off, another one is to work normally with all the servos powered on, and the third option is for the tilt and roll to work, whereas the pan stays uh, disconnected. And I think this is the proper option to use when taking off or landing. Because if you keep the pan enabled during takeoff, uh, the frame will just rotate like crazy. And uh, we've been told that uh, more options will be added to, into RGS. Uh, specifically an option to keep all servers powered on but locked so that the gimbal will not actually work all the servers will just be locked so that camera will not move during takeoff or, or landing uh, another important thing if you are using I'm going to rotate everything this is a 50 millimeter lens so you see it's quite uh, big Make sure when you place the camera that you leave enough room here for the lens uh, not to hit the gimbal. And if you use the 16mm uh, lens then you can put it all the way in front and actually it's the best way so that the, the arms will not show up on the, on the camera. And uh, make sure that you wire everything so that the gimbal has free movement. Otherwise, you risk breaking things, and that would not be uh, good. So, yeah, another thing, really uh, nice thing. So, as I said, this is the Stratosnapper. Whatever you use this one or another uh, such device to control the camera, you need the AR, IR uh, LED, the infrared LED, to be placed here near the uh, sensor of the camera. Now, when you fly, you have wind, you have movement, you, make, you must make sure that this is fixed properly uh, here, otherwise you, you might lose control of the, of the camera. So what we are going to try to do is use this piece of foam and we are going to make it a little bit stiffer using some power tape and we are going to mount it here. And the AR, the IR uh, LED will be uh, placed on this piece of foam so that it will always stay in that position. I hope this will work. I forgot to tell you what the other two channels are needed for. As you can see, there are two cables connected to the Stratosnapper. What you can do with the Stratosnapper is the following. You can, each of these two uh, channels that the Stratosnapper have, you can bind to one of your uh, remote controller switches. And our intention is to have one of the channels bound to a 3 switch and it will allow us to, one, take pictures, two, start recording, and the third, uh, uh, position will be uh, neutral and the other channel we will bind on another free switch to be able to control the shutter speed meaning that if you want to take continuous shooting you might want to have those uh, shots being taken at I don't know 5 seconds between each other 10 seconds and in the Stratosnapper you can set those options so you can have the possibility of taking uh, continuous shooting at different uh, time intervals depending on how you uh, set up your uh, your switches. So uh, that's why you need six channels on, uh, on the receiver. Another very very important tip is the following. No matter where you place this Sony camera, whether it's 5N or 5R, 
it will hit here on the gimbal. So if the roll rotates too much, normally for, we, are, we are going to use NASA. Normally on NASA the maximum angle it can rotate to is 45 degrees if you fly in attitude or GPS mode. But I'm assuming that in certain conditions where, for instance, you have wind, it might happen that the gimbal will rotate even more than 45 degrees. Okay? So if that happens, it means that the camera will at some point hit some parts of the gimbal. You can see it here that it hits the gimbal. Now, maybe you don't know this, but the RSGS uh, does not allow you to set limits on how much roll or tilt it will uh, uh, use automatically. So you can set limits of how much roll and tilt you can uh, give from the transmitter, but there are no limits for uh, automatic uh, roll and tilt that the RSGS is doing. So the only option you have here is to make sure the gimbal will block before hitting the camera. So we are gonna, uh, we already thought of a solution of how to make sure that the gimbal will block before hitting the camera and we are gonna show this when, uh, when it's done but it's, it's, it's really important that you take this into account in order not to break your camera or the gimbal. And uh, another thing regarding how the camera is placed First, you, you want to make sure that the camera is placed, uh, is balanced, so that uh, the gimbal will not have to work uh, too hard in one direction compared to the other direction. So if you put the camera too much in front of the gimbal, then when it will have to pull the camera up, you, you'll put extra work on the server. So you want it to be centered, so that there will not be uh, too much pressure on the on the server and um, as you can see I'm using the standard uh, bolt here to connect the camera and no matter what bolt you use the camera will just move a bit so you have to find ways to connect the camera in other points as well so that it will not just move like this and uh, screw up your uh, your footage. So the only way we could figure out so far is to use this, I don't know what these are, from the camera to connect them either to these points here as you can see the gimbal blocks before reaching that point so either to this point and this point here or somewhere on the, on the tray. So you have to have a, at least another one connection point between the camera and the tray, otherwise your camera will just move like this.